Welcome to Explore Embedded. In this video, we will see what a microcontroller really is and we will also understand why it is used in a lot of applications. So, you should be knowing a controller is used in automotive and it is used in robots, rovers of all kinds. Then it's also used in consumer electronics like your washing machine, uh, TV, digital TVs and all that stuff. Uh, and you could also find it from a smartphone to a dumb phone so it's everywhere so in this tutorial we'll see what really is inside a microcontroller and why is it used in so many places so let's start with the block diagram of a microcontroller so what we have as a core of a microcontroller is called as uh, ALU uh, so ALU is basically arithmetic and logical unit so uh, it performs uh, several arithmetic as well as logical operations that we'll see in a little while so apart from ALU uh, what we have in a controller is some sort of memory so if you look at computers they do not have inbuilt memory so we connect an external hard drive or a CD DVD drive but microcontrollers have an inbuilt memory. So we'll see what type of memory it is and how it is used. So uh, apart from all this, uh, you also need a control unit which coordinates uh, the ALU and the memory. So and various other units. So you basically need a control unit, and uh, for for the ALU to communicate with the external world, you need uh, I.O. ports. So these I.O. ports uh, can be digital or analog. So we'll discuss this in just a while. So we need a lot of I.O. ports. Uh, apart from all this, we have uh, what you call inbuilt analog to digital converter. So in order to uh, read analog signals, uh, we um, many a times have uh, inbuilt ADC in a microcontroller uh, and there are other internal features like timers and counters inbuilt into an MCU so these uh, you will find all of these basic features in any of the microcontrollers now apart from all this all the modern microcontrollers that that we get they also have uh, other features like uh, they have inbuilt uh, USB uh, which is the latest protocol to communicate with the computers so you have uh, inbuilt USB when some of these connect uh, to internet via an ethernet port and some of them also have an integrated Bluetooth so what this does is this makes a complete system on chip or uh, usually referred as SOC so this is what a microcontroller is inside so uh, we'll see how a controller uh, controller is formed along its main component which is ALU so we'll see ALU in detail and see how all other parts fall in place to make a complete controller so let's look at ALU in detail so uh, before go before we go ahead and see what what an ALU really is well what we'll see is uh, what are the basic components from which an ALU is made so uh, as we know it does two types of operations one is arithmetic so this could include all the addition subtraction multiplication and division and it does all sorts of logical operations like and or nor etc so uh, it is all of this now what we'll uh, start with is we'll see uh, how it does a simple addition operation uh, now uh, if, if you have gone through binary addition let's say you want to add a couple of bits so say I'm adding two bits 0 and 1 
and the result would be one the sum would be one and there would be no carry so this operation can basically be done by a half adder so to add just two simple bits now uh, say we have a situation where we want to add one and one so in this case we have a zero as the sum and one as the carry so uh, for the next stage so if you want to add successive bits say we have uh, more than one bit input we usually require a three bit input device so we go for a full adder now if you look at this half adder so let's see how, how that looks so uh, this is a simple half adder so these are inputs a and b so if we add a and b so this is a sum and the carry so when we have both the inputs as 1 1 we get a carry as 1 and sum as 0 now we can cascade two half adders to make a full adder so in this case we can uh, not only take the inputs a and b but we can also take uh, carry in from the previous sections so that we can cascade various 1 bit adders to make a 4 bit or a 8 bit adder so uh, we can make uh, any adder that we wish so we can make a 4 bit or a 8 bit adder with this now now what happens if we uh, uh, cascade 4 adders and if we uh, make a single unit let's say we'll do a single bit adder first so a single bit adder if i put this in the block diagram this particular one bit adder so the two inputs will be a and b and the output will be sum and carry so this apart from a and b it will also take uh, input carry so it is c in so that various units can be cascaded so that uh, more than one full bit adder can be combined to make a 4 bit adder or, or, a, or a 8 bit adder so uh, let's see uh, how we can make a simple ALU taking this particular uh, one bit adder so let's see if we want to make a one bit ALU which performs on uh, two bits uh, A0 and B0 so uh, these are just the two input bits and this is the full adder which we discussed and it also takes uh, input from a previous adder unit so uh, and uh, so we have a carry out here and this is the sum so this is the sum output so this can go to the next one bit adder now apart from this since our ALU will have also a logical unit say our logical uh, unit basically does very simple operations like uh, and uh, nor or a, or a XOR so uh, say it just does uh, these three simple operations at this point in time so this becomes our arithmetic unit and this becomes a logical unit now to select a particular operations operation to be done on uh, bit a0 and b0 uh, we have a multi multiplexer here so since we have four set of operations to be selected we have a two bit uh, multiplexer so if m0 and m1 are the selection lines when both uh, the selection lines are zero uh, it takes the two inputs a0 and b0 and adds them so it, it becomes uh, an arithmetic operation now when uh, this is zero and one it performs the next operation which is uh, and so uh, this is a logical operation that the ALU does similarly if it is one zero it does uh, nor and an XOR so, uh, so this is a simple one bit ALU yes we have skipped a lot of details say uh, with just adder how can it be an arithmetic unit so we'll see that in, in just a while so to give you an idea of what uh, it actually is is it has a simple arithmetic unit and a logical unit and the operations are selected uh, with the use of the selection lines on the multiplexer so uh, this is a one bit ALU which performs operation on just two bits now we can take such ALUs, one bit ALUs and we can put this entire unit in a block 
and you can make a 4 bit or an 8 bit ALU. So here we have uh, a 4 bit ALU. So uh, the inputs uh, in the previous case were just A0, A and B. So now we have uh, inputs A0 to A4. Uh, this is one input and the other input is B0 to B4. Now depending on the selection lines M0 and M1 we select whatever operation is required and the F0 to F3 is the output in this case. So this makes a 4-bit ALU. Now this can be extended to make a 4-bit or a 8-bit ALU. Now if you go back and look what we had done, so it was a simple uh, unit which just does uh, adding operation in the arithmetic section. So uh, what uh, basically this means is this can be a similar unit uh, which does uh, subtraction, uh, multiplication or division. Many a times these uh, units are derived from the adder unit. So subtraction as we know it can be also done using ones or twos complement and multiplication it's repetitive addition. So similarly if you repetitively subtract something it's as good as doing a division. So a single arithmetic unit uh, would suffice or a single adder would suffice to make a arithmetic unit. So uh, now there are various important conclusions to make here. So the first is if a single modular unit is made then we can have uh, a, f a, f a 4 bit or a 8 bit or a 16 bit or a 32 bit uh, ALU. So uh, when we look at microcontrollers you usually find them to be 8 bit, 16 bit or 32 bit. Now if someone says it's a 8 bit ALU, you really know what, what, what he means. So what, what basically it means is uh, the ALU is 8 bit or it can perform operations on two 8 bit operands. So uh, this is one important conclusion. Now similarly if we uh, look at what other things we use in the diagram. So the next is uh, the inputs A and B. So the inputs A and B and even the output sum and the carry or uh, the outputs which we have denoted as F0 and F1, these need to be stored somewhere. So uh, for the same reason we have, uh, we have something called as registers in a CPU or uh, in a microcontroller. So this is the reason we have registers. So apart from the inputs and outputs, uh, you also need a uh, few more registers to process the data or to perform uh, some of the other operations. So this is the reason we have registers in a microcontroller. Now uh, also uh, we could observe that the two selection lines which were uh, used to select the operations in the uh, controller as M0 and M1. So uh, these uh, M0 and M1 they form the op codes or the operation codes. So as we as we have seen so if M0 and M1 is 0 0 it does addition. So this basically selects the operation that the uh, ALU performs. So uh, so all these group of uh, instructions in this case we have just taken two selection lines. So it could be uh, eight selection lines. Uh, so it will form 2 to the power 8 as 256 different uh, instructions that the ALU can perform and this makes the instruction set of the of the controller or the processor. Now uh, other important thing is uh, the all the uh, instructions that we have so usually we write uh, a group of them to say uh, to do a particular task and that that is our program and it is usually stored in in a different memory called a flash memory so it is a permanent memory and is used to store uh, the group of instructions or the code so this becomes our uh, flash memory so it is usually used to store code and data so uh, the programs that we write are stored in flash now, 
So the flash is not a faster memory. So we have uh, something intermediate to copy the data from flash uh, so that it can be used by the CPU. So usually we have a RAM inside a controller. So and uh, now with all this, uh, the controller is still not functional because it needs to uh, interact with the external world. So we need to have a set of uh, I/O pins. Now these could be of two types. This could be uh, digital in nature, wherein we send and receive ones and zeros, or they could be analog. So as we had seen in the block diagram, uh, most of the controllers will have an integrated uh, analog to digital converters and these are taken out in terms of pins which are accessible. So uh, this can be used, uh, used to read uh, temperature, uh, pressure or any of the analog parameters like light. So uh, these are the analog things. So basically I.O. will consist of a digital pins uh, which do on and off type of operations and uh, analog which uh, which are basically used to read um, analog the analog sensors now uh, one more uh, thing is uh, there are various other integrated circuits or other controllers that need to be uh, connected to this particular uh, uh, controller to make it usable so usually you have uh, i2c spi usb and all other uh, simple protocols which enable the controller to be connected to other external uh, devices or ICs. Now apart from all this, uh, there, there are other internal hardware features like timers. So these are used uh, to count time or to count uh, external events. So, uh, so you also have timers and counters inbuilt. Now, so apart from all this you will need a unit to coordinate everything so so that's the reason you have a control unit in most of the controllers or uh, processes now if we go back and look at the block diagram you would now see why uh, we have all these uh, units in a in a microcontroller now apart from all all of this there's two important points uh, which need to be noted and this is the reason why controllers are uh, so widely used. So the first uh, one is speed. So these days you get controllers uh, from say 1 megahertz to a couple of gigahertz. So it's a fair amount of speed. Now this we will see with uh, several examples in the upcoming videos as to why this is important because in the physical world the operations are very slower and when we have a controller of such speed then uh, a task become very easy and uh, many of these could be automated the second major reason why controllers are used everywhere are they are programmable so uh, all the set of opcodes or the programs that we write uh, in a controller that can be redone and uh, any of the generic microcontrollers they can be used uh, to uh, use to make specific applications so it's these are two important reasons why controllers are used in uh, various devices in the upcoming sessions we will see uh, we'll take up a specific controller and see uh, and see in detail how it works thank you for watching